I'm John Jenner, and very, very happy to be back at the New York Stock Exchange uh, here today with Tony Addy, who's a co-founder and CEO of Phenonic. Uh, Tony, thanks for joining us. Uh, delighted to be here. Great, so um, we're going to talk about IPOs and a lot of exciting stuff, but first, tell us about this company that you co-founded 15 years ago. Well, Silicon Valley is not randomly named. Silicon is the sort of godfather of the semiconductor community, transforming the way we communicate, the way we harness the sun, the way we light our buildings, now even the way automobiles see. Yet in the world of cooling and refrigeration, left unchecked, $50 billion of available market opportunity, we decided to apply semiconductor innovation in a very sustainably transformative way for that opportunity. All right, great. Um, so tell us, what is solid state cooling technology? What's that about? Solid state's just a euphemism for semiconductor innovation, ah, okay. meaning using no moving parts, the movement of either electrons, photons, or in our case, phonons, can create the transmission of data, the harnessing of light, or the harnessing of heat and generating coldness. All right, great. Now, uh, Tony, when we were talking in the green room here before we started, um, I was very curious about your background. So tell me, how did this come about? Uh, you co-founded the company 15 years ago, as I, I just did. mentioned. What were you up to before that? So my background's in material science. Okay. Uh, I was working in battery research and alternative materials. I've always been in and around sustainability, energy technology in some way. I then had a unique opportunity to do a stint at a venture capital fund, investing in companies like Phenonic. Uh -huh. Very early stage, often university incubated, areas where typical venture capitalists won't play because it's too unproven. And discovering this opportunity and building my network, what would become Phenonics founding investors asked me to diligence the semiconductor physics that would ultimately give rise to our technology platform. Great, now tell us what kinds of customers you have. I know you can't name all of them because sure. you may not have announced them all, but can you tell us what kinds of uh, customers you know, need your services? Well, when you throw out a lofty number like a $50 billion market, it's, in, it's intimidating. So what yeah. we really had to do uh, as we've matured and developed the company is understand the market product fit as to who has the most unique cooling needs. Yeah. And when you step back, particularly looking at the legacy incumbents that they don't like, yeah. you find unique opportunities in data center, communications, and optics, cold chain, grocery, storage, and delivery, uh, and then lastly, HVAC, and unique opportunities that require large-scale cooling. So segmenting that market that way, we've then worked with the leading manufacturers in optics and telecom, and now major automotive manufacturers who are adopting our technology for safety, oh. the sensors that the automobile uses to see. In cold chain, major retailers like Walmart and Amazon and Sam's Club and all the names that you see here on the exchange have a difficult time predicting e-commerce behavior of perishable goods. They build these huge warehouses for refrigeration or freezing yeah. and only use a portion of the space. Oh. Our, cold chain, our cold chain solutions liberalize that space by being a modular solution that they can transport. And then lastly, Looking at the expansive opportunities, we developed a licensing platform where we can now go into commercial real estate and work in conjunction with the building, lowering the CO2 and the energy consumption. So in each case, we have world-class brand partners that we either sell to, solution provide, or license our technology. All right, great. I want to talk about one of those uh, categories. How does sure. that work with the um, uh, the, uh, the automotive um, stuff? Is that is that related to LiDAR technology? It is, it is. So to us, LiDAR is just an extension of the optical networks we've already been in. Oh. When data is communicated along a wavelength of light, that sensor that generates the, the, the data and receives it has to be kept at a very careful temperature. The LiDAR sensors and automobiles work the same way. If they come out of phase because of temperature swings, the car can't see. And if the car can't see, the effect of the LiDAR goes away. Wow. So we're now designed in with several major automotive manufacturers as well as leading LiDAR partners to provide that solution. That's, that's really interesting stuff. Now we're talking a lot about cooling, but you do sure. heating too, right? We can, when you reverse the polarity of our chip, the other side gets <laughs> hot. And uh, it's a unique feature that you can operate in phase because there are unique swings, particularly with optics and automotive, but with buildings where we can alternate between cooling and heating, giving you a net beneficial effect. Great, that's, that's really interesting. Um, you know, we talked about this grocery retail fulfillment, yes. so is that is that the same idea as when you're talking about the big warehouses, or? It is. The challenge with fulfillment is the retailers cannot predict our behavior, Okay. particularly when it comes to cold or frozen items. So specking your warehouse or real estate in response to the customer's needs is ever-changing. So from our perspective, we want to avoid the large installations, and through active cooling solutions that combine hardware, software, and data tracking, you can now transmit and move and distribute cold and frozen items without dry ice, gel packs, or other unsustainable alternatives. And it's been an exciting area for us to move into this year. 
Great. Um, all right. Last but not least, um, let's talk about the eventual IPO. Sure. So um, when I asked you about this before, this is something you've always had in your mind. I'm sure it your is. investors are curious to know how you look at that. Good news is there's an IPO pricing tonight, so <laughs> maybe we're getting some momentum back. Yeah, I hope so. Well, look, it, it, it's when we the benefit of having started my career on the venture capital side is you understand the incredible wealth creation opportunity and financing capability of the public markets. So seeing some of my portfolio investments early in my career tap that for growth, obviously wealth creation for shareholders. When we founded Phenonic, just given the sheer disruptive nature of the technology, the magnitude of the markets, the public markets was the likely outcome we've always aspired to be. We're not afraid or intimidated by that challenge. It's one we're really excited for. All right, well, Tony, we're going to leave it there. This has been a fantastic interview, fascinating stuff. Thank, thanks for being here. Thanks uh, for having us. That's Tony Addy, who is the co-founder and CEO of Phenonic, and I'm John Janarone, signing off. <laughs>